my name is Michelle Mays. I am the co-founder of Champions for Philanthropy. And my co-founder, Alicia Powell, and I are so excited to present today's event. At Champions for Philanthropy, we assist professional athletes and other influencers with their charitable endeavors. And we have the privilege of working with our client, Batuli Kamara, on this incredible event today. You can learn more about our work by following us on social media using the handle Champions for Philanthropy. And now I'll turn it over to the host of today's event, professional basketball player and founder of Women and Kids Empowerment, Batuli Kamara. Hi, my name is Batuli Kamara and I'm the founder and CEO of Women and Kids Empowerment, WAKE, and also a professional basketball player. This year, I became the first covered player in the Spanish league. I quickly realized it is not easy to be the first. I wanted to hear about the experiences of other women who had been the first in their line of work. Today, we will be with a dynamic group of women who have been the first in their field and are dedicated to not being the last. So get ready for an hour of exercise, motivation, and inspiration. Thank you so much for joining us, and I really hope you enjoy this session today. Hi, I hope you are doing well today. My name is Batuli Kamar, and welcome to our virtual basketball camp. Today, you're only gonna need the following items. A basketball, if you have one, and four cards labeled or colored red, green, yellow, and blue. I'm so excited for us to get started. And right now, I want us to focus on our visualization technique. I'm gonna walk you through this entire workout, and this is so important. This is something that I do every single day, just being intentional about the workout that you're doing. So to start, um, we're gonna do our visualization technique. You're walking through this workout. You're being intentional about what you're focusing on. We're gonna start off with a stretch. From there, to get our body activated and moving, from there we're gonna do a warm up just to take it to another gear. Then we're gonna go into our ball handling series. From there, our shooting. Last is our cool down. And then to finish it all off is our meditation just for a minute, which is so important. And this just allows you to go back through your workout. What did I do? Was I intentional? How can I improve on this? Um, I'm so excited to get started and I hope you enjoy. Thank you. So to start off, I always, I always, always, always wanna shake it out, shake it out. You know, getting ready for our stretch, shake it out. From there, just getting my arms moving a little bit, moving side to side. We're gonna do each one of these for five reps. Um, not too long, just to get your body moving. Again, you can do some arm circles, right? For five, good. From there, just getting my neck activated. You know, going both ways, some neck rolls, always so important. We hold so much tension there. Um, and from there, we're gonna go right into our high knees. Just staying right in place, just getting the body activated. Again, five total, just getting our body moving. From there, an ankle stretch, right? Lifting that arms up, even getting to your tippy toes. Really a great stretch, something that I do every single day. From there, kind of call us the ankle hug. Another great stretch. Um, I love this for my hips, it's absolutely amazing. Good, just getting our body moving again. Five reps for each. From there, we're just gonna do five body weight squats. Good. Just to get your body moving. Five reps, really focus. Good. Now from there, we're gonna go right into our lateral lunge. But I want the arm motion just to get us moving a little bit. Right, so we're here. Good. Three, four, five. Nice. From there, forward lunge, right? So the key is, I'll show you from the side. I'm really going all the way up. Really following your hand up with your eyes. Really important stretch. Um, something that I do all the time. I'm gonna just switch legs. Good. Just for five, we're just getting our body moving. Nice job. Okay, and from there, we're gonna go right into our little scoops. So important again, getting that hamstring. Nice, just for five. Just to get our body moving a little bit. From there, you should be pretty loose, cause I am, so you're just gonna shake it out. That was a good stretch. Now it's time for the warm up. Hi, it is now time for our warm up. At this time, I want you to grab your red, green, yellow, and blue squares, either colored or labeled. We're gonna start off with some agility, which is really important in getting your body activated. Now at this time, we're just gonna put them randomly, so put it anyway, and the music is gonna start once we start. And as you're hopping, once the music stops, I want you to land on one foot, 
to really work on our balance, okay? Just to start, we're gonna do it light. Going up, back, right? Right back, don't hit the paper like me. Good, good. So now the music is going, right? Stop, good. We're gonna keep going. Good, good job, really hold your balance. Okay. Better, better. Last time. Good, good job. That was our first warm up. So at this time, we have now laid our four squares labeled red, green, yellow, and blue on the floor. You can lay it down in any order that you want. For this, red is going to be squats, just body weight squats. Yellow is gonna be jumping jacks, we're only doing three. Green is gonna be push-ups, and blue is going to be abs. So I want you to remember that order, right? Red is squats, yellow is jumping jacks, green is push-ups, blue is abs, right? So just to start, we're gonna get here. I'm gonna stay right, right? We're gonna slide to the right. Good, as fast as you can. Three, right? Now we're gonna go to blue. What is that? That's abs. For abs, we're just gonna do basic sit-ups. So just here, two, Three, good, get as quickly as possible. Yellow, jumping jacks, two, three, nice. Green, three push-ups. Nice, back up, back up, back up. Right, good, three, nice. Green, back to push-ups. Nice, back to yellow. Nice, time for blue, Let's do those sit-ups. Keep moving, keep moving. Good. Good job, clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. I know it's time for some of your favorite part, which is ball handling. Um, keys to this, really keeping your back straight. We don't want to ever like hunch like this because it's really gonna cause some back pain. So just staying straight up, right? Getting a low stance. Your body, your chest is up forward. We're just gonna start with something really simple, just ball, just ball pounds, right? Right hand, put 10. Good. We're going to do 10 each. Switch hands. From there, we're just going to go right into 100 pounds. Good. And the longer you go, the faster. You know, we're just warming up. Good. From there, we're going to go into knee dribble. Again, we're doing 10 reps for each one. Good. Now, the longer you go, you can go wider if you want. It's okay to make mistakes. Switch hands. Same thing wider. Definitely keeping that chest up, head up, super important. Um, really keeping that integrity. From there, we're going to go right into Z dribbles. I actually never know what it's called. This might be another V dribble. But just for 10, we're just getting warmed up. Good. Switch hands. Always important to work on your left hand <laughs> or your non-dominant hand. Um, but again, yeah, something that you do every single day. From there, we're just gonna stay solid, staying rooted. Just go right into scissor jerk. Good. Now right here, our focus is not to move. We're just getting a feel and control for the ball. And then from there, we're gonna go right behind the back, right? Good, for 10, super important. Keep moving with the ball. Good. Nice. For 10, 10 is everything. From there, we're gonna go right into our in and out, cross to your legs behind the back. We're gonna go to combo to finish. Again, now you're activated. You've done all these motions, right? Now you're just putting it together, right? Good. Make sure you're switching hands. Good. Nice. And as you keep going, you can start moving with it. Good. Nice, nice, nice. So again, 10 reps each for everything. Super important. Stay low, chest up, eyes up, really pounded. Um, this is something that I do every single day and I know it'll improve your game. It is now time for our shooting portion. These are all things that you can do at home um, that really require no dribble, but so important in working on that technique. So just to start, we're gonna just lay on the ground. Um, everyone has probably done this, but just getting that ball. 
in that rotation. Really working on that part. Good. Now from there, we're gonna get up and we're gonna do something that I do every single day, which is hops. Again, for five reps. The key to this is really staying under the ball, really working on your technique, right? So we're just gonna go here, quick hop, right? Quick hop. Getting under the ball. Good. Last one. From there, we're gonna work on some balance, okay? This is something that I do every single day. Um, really, really important. Really extend the, extend out. We're going right in, right? I'll show you from the side. So you're going here, you're really stretching out. Going right up, good. From there, we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite leg. Um, again, for five each. This knees, I gotta work on a little bit. Same fundamental principles, right? Getting the ball out, getting right underneath it. That's for five. From there, we're gonna go right into our hops, right? So I'm gonna go here, hop right into my shot. Good. Here, again, working on balance. Balance is such a huge part of your shot. Get it right underneath the ball. Same thing on the upside. Good. Really land. Always make sure to really bend that knee. So you're going here, really bend, really bend. Huge part of it. To finish, we're gonna work on our pull ups a little bit. This is something, again, that I do every single day which is so important. And that is really, we're gonna activate that foot, right? So we're gonna go for five reps. Activate that foot. Really bring that ball up and really stepping forward like you're shooting the ball. Same thing on the other side, right? Good. Right, good. So these are things that I do every single day. Um, again, for five reps each, really work to get low, really work to get quicker. And doing this every single day really helps. Thanks. It is finally time for our cool down. The workout is now over. Um, at this time, we're just gonna go right, you know, shake it out. I always just believe in that initial, just shaking it out. From there, it's gonna go five toe touches. Getting all the way up, getting that range of motion. So important, just to kind of cool down. From there, I always like to go kind of into a low squat, really stretch out my hips. Um, Again, now we're just cooling down, um, make my way to the floor, um, go back into my toe touches. I think this is so important. Good. And then kind of one leg. I always do that. Keeping that for like 10 seconds, super important. Again, this is the cool down. Good. Now from here, um, we're just gonna work a little bit. I'm not that flexible, but we're gonna really work um, to meditate on what we just did. I think it's so important to really give it a minute um, to meditate, to focus, you know, what do we do? How is the workout? Where can we improve? How can we be much more intentional about the next day? Um, and I really work to do this. So we're just gonna take about, I usually do this for three minutes, but right now we're just gonna take about 30 seconds um, to just really sit and think about our workout and what we wanna improve on. Um, and really turning the page to get ready for what's next. Awesome, so I usually sit like this. This is pretty comfortable for me. Um, and just think about my workout. Awesome, that was really good. I think that was a great workout. Um, and really during the meditation, it's really important to breathe. I think this is a great workout. Um, I'm so thankful to have you all here. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Wow, what a great video. Now I am excited to uh, introduce the moderator for today's panel. Sarah Kustak is Yes Network's lead Brooklyn Nets game analyst and holds the distinction as the first female solo analyst for an NBA team, along with becoming the first woman to win a New York Emmy as sports analyst. 
Sarah additionally serves as an NBA and college basketball analyst on Fox Sports, as well as a sideline reporter for the NFL on Fox. She joins CBS as we need to talk as a regular host, along with being a weekly analyst for Sirius XM NBA radio. Uh, Sarah was inducted into the Chicago Sports Hall of Fame in 2012, and she is a 2021 inductee to the Illinois Basketball Coaches Association Hall of Fame. She's earned her master's in corporate and multicultural communication from DePaul in 2010, and we're excited to have her moderate today's panel. Thanks, Sarah. I am absolutely thrilled, thrilled to be here um, and be joined by everyone. And we cannot thank you all enough, um, in particular Batuli and Wake for bringing us all together. Um, so now I want to introduce our extraordinary panel of individuals um, who I am truly humbled and honored uh, to be here, to listen to them, to hear their insight. All of them have such special and unique stories. And for that reason, um, I just think we're all gonna love um, getting an opportunity to hear. So first, um, AJ Andrews is a multifaceted businesswoman and a model, in addition to being a former division one athlete, now a professional softball player. She's also served as a TV analyst, um, a host, she's been on ESPN, Stadium Sports, MLB Network, a softball instructor, motivational speaker, a mentor, the list goes on. You can see why she is so special. And in 2016, AJ Andrews made history and became the first woman to ever win a Rawlings Gold Glove Award, an award given to the best defensive player in Major League Baseball and now softball. So, um, a big, huge warm welcome to AJ. Uh, it's so great to have her on. Next, uh, Phaedra Knight, an athlete, a sports media talent, motivational speaker, uh, business entrepreneur. She made three appearances in the Rugby World Cup, was selected as a top player in the world in her position in 2002 and 2006. Um, and in 2010, she was named the US Rugby Player of the Decade. In November 2017, she became the first and only Black American inducted into the World Rugby Hall of Fame. The former attorney is on the board of directors for USA Rugby Board and the board of trustees for the Women's Sports Foundation and will serve as the president for 2021. Now, Phaedra founded PK Unleashed in 2019, a nonprofit organization dedicated to the personal and physical development of marginalized youth. And Phaedra works as a sports broadcaster for a multitude of networks. And also on the big screen, she'll be featured with Halle Berry and Halle's directorial debut, Bruised, which is scheduled to be released later in 2021. She also launched her clothing line, the PSK Collective, in August of 2020. So a big warm welcome to Phaedra. Next, we have Dr. Jen Welter, um, and Dr. Jen Welter, the first female to coach in the NFL. In the summer of 2015, she served as a linebackers coach for the Arizona Cardinals and has um, long been a trailblazer when it comes to professional football. Welter was the head coach of the first Australian women's national team, the first woman to play running back in a men's professional football league with the Texas Revolution and hired as the first female coach in men's professional football with the Revolution. Welter had a highly decorated 14 year career herself in the women's professional football, um, which included four world championships, two gold medals as a member of Team USA and eight all-star selections. She was inducted into the first class of the Women's Football Hall of Fame in November, on November 30th, 2018. Um, she also has a signature program, A Day in the Life Camp. She created the uh, Gridiron Flag Football Camp, along with a number of other community initiatives like her Camp on the Corner program that brings football to youth in underserved areas. Um, and she also released her first pu publication, Play Big Lessons and Being Limitless from the First Woman to Coach in the NFL in 2017. So big, big warm wel welcome to Dr. Jen Welter. And last but certainly not least, Colette V. Smith, the founder and the president of Believe in You Incorporated and the NFL's first African-American female coach in the history of the National Football League by way of being the first female coach in New York Jets franchise history, um, coaching the defensive backs in 2017 during training camp. Smith herself is a former women's professional football player. She was a defensive back, defensive back coach, and was the director of marketing, PR, promotions, and events for the New York Sharks in two women's professional football leagues. 
Colette today is an entrepreneur specializing in motivational speaking, um, recently featured in a docu-series on BET Her for their show Exceptional Black Women. She was recently honored at the Power of Influence Awards for the Year of the Woman Award. Um, and just, I, I have to say, of course, a another warm welcome to Colette, um, but to all of you females and women and individuals being first in your profession. I had to shorten those bios um, for everyone listening because you have all accomplished so much. And I know it's only the beginning of so much more that you have aspirations to do. So with that being said, um, and Colette, I'm going to start with you, but I want to hear this from everyone because I said some of the highlights of your careers, as I said, it certainly is not the only thing, but if you can let everyone know um, in your own words, a brief, brief, brief background, um, where you went to school and just how you view what it is that you do now. So I, um, nice to meet you, by the way, Sarah. <laughs> um, it's an honor to be here with these powerful women. But um, I'm a little black girl from Queens that always loved football and was never allowed to play. I probably am the oldest woman on this panel. Do I say probably I am the oldest woman in, on this panel? You don't look like it. You don't look Thank like you. it. Thank you. Keep Drink drinking, Sarah. <laughs> but I was never allowed to play football uh, outside of playing with the boys in the neighborhood. So I did not start playing women's pro football until I was 42 years old. And I'll be the first to say that that very first day of me trying out for this team was one of the highlights of my life. So football saved my life. For me to see women changing the narrative about what we're told we're, we are allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do was victorious for me. And from that day, I have been a superhero. And I went from saying, I'm gonna go try out for this team, I will not make the team because I'm 42, to I'm gonna make this team today. And I discovered how strong I can be. And with a, with a tight sisterhood of like-minded women, so for me to eventually uh, play, and I was not the best player, but I was a student of the game. I was a scholar of the game. And I wanted to learn every facet. So from that point, I think looking out for my women's team wanting the best for them, uh, reaching out to the NFL, saying, hey, uh, to the New York Jets and to the New York Giants, you guys have sisters in pro football here in New York. That opened the door for women in football for me and my team to, um, to highlight us. So from that point to be called on uh, by the head coach of the New York Jets, at that time, it was a black man that was a head coach, very rare. So there are a lot of things that I think about when it comes to sports and how it can advance you emotionally, physically, uh, in and, and, and all terms of winning. Amazing, Colette, we appreciate that. Um, and again, the, the inspiration runs wide and in me being here and living in New York and getting a chance, I, I got to see it and witness it firsthand. So um, yeah. such a tremendous thing. Uh, Phaedra, what about you? Fill us in about you, your background um, and, and just what it is too that you're also doing now. Absolutely, pleasure to meet you, Sarah. And uh, likewise, it's an honor to be uh, part of this panel with such a, an esteemed uh, group of ladies. Um, I grew up on a farm just outside of a small rural Georgia town called Irwinton. Um, you know, probably very different from what Colette did um, <laughs> when she was, uh, you know, dodging traffic and taxis. I was dodging pigs and cows, so slightly different. But um, just, I guess, being brought up in that sort of environment and, um, you know, being a, really a farm laborer. Um, really helped to set the stage for me as an athlete. Um, I <clears throat> love football, much like Colette um, growing up. Um, but at that time and in, in that place, I wasn't allowed to play. So uh, I recall when I was in kindergarten, uh, my sister who was four years my, or is four years my elder, um, wanted to be a cheerleader uh, at that time and very, very uh, politically incorrectly called midget league football. Um, but, um, she went out for cheerleading and she, you know, she knew my love for football. So she encouraged me to actually do the same, um, knowing that at some point I would find my way onto the field. 
And so I did, and uh, I guess every year I did it uh, at the end of the year, we'd have a party uh, with the football players and the cheerleaders, and I would make my way to the field and play football with the boys. And every single time I would outrun them, I'd run through them. So this sort of set the stage for me. Um, again, it was a foreshadowing of what, 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 what could come to be um, as a rugby player. But all in all, you know, I graduated from Alabama State University. So I, I stayed in the South until I journeyed up to the Midwest uh, for law school at the University of Wisconsin. And that is where I found essentially the love of my life, rugby. Um, or at least to this point, the love of my life, rugby. And, um, you know, the, the rest is pretty much history. I, I, rugby has taken me all over the world, um, you know, and um, it has opened up pathways. It's been really the source of my evolution. Um, and it's brought me to so many different things, including where I am now, um, which is I, I'm a mixed martial artist. I'm, I'm training um, to be a professional uh, MMA fighter, um, you know, and will be a first, I think, um, to, to make that, meet that, um, that goal um, past the age of 45. So um, I am, um, yeah, I'm just grateful for my humble beginnings. Um, they have certainly um, played a significant factor in where I am right now. So Thank hey, you. We're, we're grateful for you and for continuing to lay, lay the path down for all of us. AJ, what about you? AJ, fill us in um, on just you know, where you came from, where you started. Um, I know we get to still see you and watch you in action here today. Yeah, I'm from Clearwater, Florida. And so I played softball. I played a lot of sports when I was younger, but softball was the one that ultimately ended up sticking. And for me, I was always extremely motivated to do more with the sport, being that in the sport of softball, I'm the only, typically the only Black athlete on the team, if not one of maybe two. And so for me, I really only had one idol growing up, and that was Natasha Watley, because she was the only one that I saw, the only one that I got to see on a major stage playing softball. And so when Natasha retired, for me, it felt like that was my role to step into because I knew the impact that she had on my life. And I don't know if softball would have been the sport that stuck if had I not had her to look up to. And so for me throughout my college career at LSU, I truly felt the need to be that person to truly inspire or at least motivate girls of color, whether you're black, brown, whatever it is to feel as if you are worthy and that there is this place for you and that you belong and that no one can tell you otherwise. And so moving forward throughout my career from college to professional softball, it only intensified meeting so many different people telling me how I'm their favorite player, even after some of my worst games coming up and telling me that. And it had nothing to do other than the fact that they saw themselves in me and they had this belief that they could excel because they saw me on the field doing so. And so that just really, from my career to the success that I've had and the different things that I've been able to achieve, my main focus and main goal is to continue to inspire and just to give these young women a belief, really, that they are able to achieve whatever it is that they set their minds to, regardless of the boundaries and if they're the only ones. And I think us on this panel being the first have been those trailblazers to give so many people that motivation of you can too. And so for me, that's really what I feel honored to be able to do throughout my career. You got to see it to be it. It's, it's tremendous. It's been tremendous watching. So thank you, AJ, for being here. Um, and Jen, welcome. Uh, fantastic to see you. And you've got a, a whole list of firsts that's, that you have accomplished, but fill, fill us a little bit about where you got started, your background, and, and what it is that you're doing now. My pleasure. Uh, thank you, Sarah, for you know facilitating this great and important panel. The first thing I want to tell all of you watching is the coolest thing about today for me is is that this is like a big family reunion. Like when I was seeing all the people on the panel, I could connect dots to each one of them, and they are all fabulous fierce trailblazers who we do complimentary things and yet 
you know, like I'll pull inspiration from something like AJ and I got to work together on the East Bay Conquer campaign. Phaedra, um, she inspired me. I was a rugby player before a football player. And Colette obviously has been, you know, a mover and shaker in football and somebody that, you know, I got to see that happen and, and be a part of hearing what, what was going to happen before the world knew. Right. Like, and I'm like, what? You, you better go. Right. Like, and, and so like for all of us in it, you have to realize that like we see and pull from each other. So to be able to share with you is so beautiful. Um, I was a multi-sport athlete, like AJ, like early and um, loved football like Phaedra didn't get to play football until I was 22 years old. And the sport that um, I credit with making me the football player that I became is rugby. So Phaedra was an inspiration to so many of us in rugby um, to look at and see this striking, I mean, tough player. And then when I went into football, they used to tell me I tackled wrong. And I was like, well, I don't miss any. And now look at them. They all want a rugby style tackle. So I was doing it before it was in vogue. Um, but what was so important, and I think any one of us would tell you, is that it's it's passion, right? It's passion and finding the place in this crazy world where you can be magic. I always said at five foot two, that's right. I know I played with the boys, but I'm still the, even one of the smaller girls. Um, I could put on the pads and helmet and step out on the football field and find magic. And when you find out you're worth magic in one area of your life, you take it to so many areas. And so the common thread in all of the things that I've done is to look at ways that I could have magic in my life and then help inspire um, other people to find magic in theirs. And it doesn't have to be the same way, it's your way. Amazing. Amazing. Jen, thank you. You're getting us all, we're, we're getting all fired up here on a Saturday. Oh yeah, we should be. I mean, uh, I, I know I've seen Agent play. She can tackle too. We can all tackle on this <laughs> panel. So we might as well just have the common thread of we will tackle the world. So it's fine. That, that's, that's a good line. That's a good line. AJ, um, tell us what it was like to be, when, when you were learned that you were going to be honored with that first Rawlings Gold Glove Award, what did that mean to you? Yeah, you know, it's really interesting thinking back on it because I remember being it being announced that they were going to be giving out the Rawlings Gold Glove Award. And I thought it was going to be just some hybrid award, just some women's gold glove, right? Something other than the actual gold glove they give to, give to the men. And so I wasn't really that excited. And for me, it's so interesting because I never played for praise, right? I never do the things that I did in order to get the recognition. I did it because that's who I am. I make these plays because I don't want anyone to win. I don't want a ball to drop if it comes anywhere in my vicinity. And so, but hearing about the award, I was just like, oh, well, that's cool. And then as we continue to move on toward the end of the season, and I realize or they you know, get more information about the award and how it is truly the gold glove award that MLB players receive, I definitely got really excited. And not just for the fact that I was, it was possible that I was going to be able to win, but just the fact that whoever won, me or the other two women that were the finalists, were going to be first. They were going to be breaking down a glass ceiling. They were going to be opening up so many more doors for so many more women to believe that they can too be the first. You know, I think that any achievement in women's sports period only opens doors to more closed doors for other women to feel the encouragement and the power to be able to break down themselves. And so for me to know that someone was going to hold that power was just really, really exciting. And when we were at the award ceremony and my name was called, I'm literally sitting down, I'm like calling out the other finalist names so that I don't get disappointed if it's not me. I'm just like, it's not, I'm thinking it's not gonna be me. And they like, call my name and I just froze. I didn't even hear it. My teammate actually had to shrug me and tell me that it was me that they just called. And so getting up there and going to receive the award, for me, it was just such a powerful moment. And not only because I was the first, right? Whether X amount of women that win the gold glove after me, I will always be the first. I'll always be that person that kind of shattered that glass for everyone. 
But to be also a black woman that was able to win this award, I just think it just showed no boundaries to what is truly achievable for everyone in the sport of softball. And that you don't have to look a certain way or be a certain way in order to be successful. If you go out and you do everything you do as who you are as a player, people will recognize and people will want to praise that. And so, you know, for me, it was just an exciting to kind of break down that word impossible, right? Before I won the award 2016, it was impossible for a woman to win a gold glove award. And for me, the honor to be able to turn, to turn that impossible declaration into a dare is what I feel is the most exciting and powerful aspect of that to be able to look at young girls today and say, no, right now, this may not seem like something you can do, but you can be the person to break that. And so that to me is the weight of that and how much it means to me. Extraordinary, extraordinary, extraordinary. Congratulations again, AJ and Phaedra. I, I want to ask the same thing to you um, because twi twice you're named the best player in the world at your position. You were the first um, player, or you were named to the U.S. Rugby Player of the Decade, but then you become the first and only Black American to be inducted into the World Rugby Hall of Fame. What was that like for you? Oh my, I was, um, I was actually in shock. Um, you know, I had literally retired. I was named to the um, World Hall of Fame, World Rugby Hall of Fame in 2017, the fall of 2017. And um, I, had, <laughs> I had taken a hiatus from rugby for several years. I came back, I played, um, I, I went out to Chula Vista to train as a, I guess, 40 year old um, with a bunch of 20 year olds for the Olympic team. I didn't make the cut. And um, at that point, I was still, you know, deliberating, like, what do I, am I done? You're right. So, um, I decided to to take take my chances and go for uh, my fourth Rugby World Cup in 15s, which would be the following year, um, 2017. And so I trained and trained. And um, I remember I was at the last camp prior to selection for the, the, the final squad. And um, I got a call from NBC. And um, I, I was given the option or given the, the opportunity to to be a broadcaster. Um, for rugby and so I decided I would retire I felt like it was the proper time and a great exit and so at that point you know I was I was done with playing probably a little bit down and beat and then I get a notification that I was um, had been selected uh, to the World Rugby Hall of Fame and at that point there were there'd been only one and still there's only on the, only one other American that was inducted into the World Rugby Hall of Fame and that was Patty Jervy uh, very de deservingly so. Um, she was a member of the 91 World Cup winning team for the U.S. And so it was pure elation, you know, and I knew that um, what I represented was far more than just one of the, you know, top players in the world, but it, uh, I was um, the first to, to sort of pave the way for other brown and black girls. Um, to follow, right? Um, other women really to follow. And so um, it meant so much to me. Uh, but I think most importantly and most personally, um, it was validation of a career that I felt like it constantly been put on the back burner. Um, you know, women's rugby, you know, has always sort of been the stepchild and not given the attention much like all women's sports or most women's sports. Um, you know, has been. And so it was a validation for me. And I felt like it was validation for every other female that boots up or that booted up every weekend um, to, 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 to play, to play the game. And so, um, yeah, I, it, it, it was also like obviously some sort of motivation for me to find my way out of retirement and enter another sport, um, crazy and, and hard hitting and um, extreme. Uh, but it, it was certainly um, a surprise. So thank you. Extraordinary. Thank you, Phaedra. Um, for, for Jen and Colette, I'm curious of this because we heard Batuli speak and um, she recognized and is much as we celebrate each other, we're uplifting each other, but how hard and challenging though 
it really is to be the first. Um, whoever wants to begin first, but take us back to that first day when you were in the position, um, what were the emotions like? What were the feelings like? How did you approach that in the very first moment that you took that position? I'll let Jen take the lead on that because she is the first female to have ever coached in the history of the National Football League. You know, it, and thank you, Clint, um, and her even saying that, like, that's the importance of it, right? It, we kicked it off and said the importance of the first is to ensure that you're not the last. I remember the most interesting thing to me is that people didn't ask, you know, can Jen Welter do this, right? It's not, can this particular woman do it? Because at that time, the sample size is one. So the question was like, could a woman coach men in the National Football League, right? And you're there in that you know that there are people who want the answer to be no, right? That they would like the door to remain closed. And so whenever I would, you know, feel scared or like I might not have enough or, um, maybe that I, I was over my skis, as you have it said, like I would think of my sisters in football and what all of us went through. And that's where I always pulled my courage is like, you know, I have an, I have an army with me. They don't know it yet, but we know it. And so it was like this crazy mix of nervousness and excitement and I'm thankful that the first guy I literally almost like ran into because I was turning a corner was Calais Campbell. And so if you guys don't know Calais, he's amazing. And he's ginormous. He's like six foot seven. And I turn the corner and I pretty much like at five foot two run into like his belly button. And I hear this giant booming voice like, Coach Jen, I've been looking forward to meeting you. And I was like, hi, Calais. I played against a woman your size once. And he's like, no, you didn't. And I was like, I did. And I showed him a picture of team Germany. And he was like, coach, that she's a big woman. And I was like, I know. And we just kind of started talking football. And I think that that's the greatest thing about it is that like, it might seem so foreign, but I'd been in football for so long. It's like, for me, the, sound, the second I heard pads popping, I was like, oh, honey, I'm home. Like, this is it. And the guys were really excited to be a part of history. That's the thing I don't think a lot of people understood is they were really happy to be a part of changing the National Football League. And it was a point of pride for them. And I couldn't have asked for, you know, better relationships to them and them to be great champions. And then literally a sport full of women and beyond who had my back. So, uh, you know, I had an army, thankfully, and, and Colette's one of those people. So, so for me, um, my, my, for, for me, it, it was, I can tell you where I was standing, what I was wearing, what I was doing when I got that call from the head coach of the New York Jets. I didn't come through, I didn't have an army, right? So for me, I was alone. I was totally alone. I didn't have an army. It was all, it was, what am I doing? What's going on? I was happy, I was excited. I was thinking about this in a way to elevate women, to, to raise my standard, to raise other girls' standards. And, you know, um, it was terrifying. It, it, it was terrifying when I, when I played football the very first time when you're on that football field and you're in full pass and it is time to hit. And I was like, oh Lord. And then that first hit, I was like, oh my God, it was invigorating. It was the most amazing thing in the world. So at that point, I had a superhero cape on. I can tell you that the guys on my team, the NFL is predominantly made up of black men. So for them to see a black woman on that field and these guys telling me, coach, I have daughters. I never thought about my daughter being an athlete, let alone a football player. So thank you. This was, I mean, to, to get letters in the mail from little black girls from, from low income neighborhoods saying, I now have more dreams. Thank you so much. Um, 
that turned me into a, a, a forever fighter for myself and for others, you know? And for me, I'm a five-time rape survivor. And I speak about it as often as I can because today I'm a survivor. I'm not a victim. And I found my power and I found my power through, through sports. For me, my sport of choice was football. And how funny is it that the sport that I love to play was a sport I was not allowed to play because of my gender, because of oppression. And now I became the first black woman to ever do it and to coach in the NFL. So kudos to women, kudos to black girls and kudos to being the first. And for me, I, when I started my company, Believe in You Incorporated, there were so many years that I did not believe in me. Way too many years. And I still fight with those moments today because you're gonna have support from people sometimes and sometimes you're not going to. Because for me, I look at this as not a competition unless we're on the field together. If we are on the field together and you're the other team, I'm coming for you. Outside of that, we should all be a family, you know? And so surrounding myself with people that love and support each other and wanna grow everybody. I can sit up here and tell you that, you know, there, there were a lot of hardships, but overcoming them is the most beautiful part. So um, it is an honor. It is a great honor to me to be amongst all these firsts, all these powerful women and, and to keep it going, to keep the torch lit. You know, we're raising our standards. We're not taking no for an answer. We're bringing hammers and jackhammers with us to continue breaking ceilings, no matter what they look like. Glass or concrete, let's go, game on. I'm calling you Coach Colette because that's 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 a pep talk. Uh, we are shouting and hollering and, and screaming, cheering right here with you, Colette. I, I love that. But you talked about those moments, and to to everyone listening, uh, we have a few more minutes of questions. But make sure you're putting your your questions um, in the chat for the panelists because we're going to get to Q and A in about five minutes. Um, but you had moments that maybe there are times that you have doubt or uncertainty. AJ, this is this is for you because I know you spoke about ways in which you inspire um, young women, girls, the youth everywhere, and, and we see it and and we watch you. Um, but what do you say to some of the young girls out there that may have moments of having doubt or being discouraged and, and how would they find that sense of confidence or inspiration in themselves? Yeah, I think it talk, it's all about milestones. And I think it's about celebrating yourself, right? You have to be your own biggest fan when it comes to that. And confidence isn't something, when you see someone that's confident, right? It's not something that they just all of a sudden had or woke up with. I think of confidence just as hard work as you've put in into your sport, right? It's every single day you have to build up that confidence because you could have all this confidence and one comment, one person can be enough to tear that back down, right? And so you have to build yourself up enough to where that you can't be torn down. Every morning you're telling yourself, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to accomplish. This is what I have accomplished. Look at where I've come to look to where I am now. I deserve everything that is taking place. And it just comes down to building up every milestone. Today, I want to get 1% better, right? Today, I want to achieve this. Once you achieve that, you feel good, right? Set, set short, maybe small milestones. Then tomorrow, something a little bit bigger. If you achieve that, you feel like you're unstoppable. And then you keep going and that's how your confidence continues to build. And that's how when you hear negative comments or you hear people telling you what you can and can't do, it just becomes, it's naysay. You're not worried about it because you know what you've been able to achieve. You know that you're able to achieve one more thing, the next thing, the next thing. These people haven't been on this journey with you and they don't know what you're capable of. And so when you're trying to build up that confidence, just seek 1% better every single day and tell yourself every single day who you are. Remind yourself of who you are. If ever I have a bad day, I just tell myself, I just didn't show up that day. That wasn't AJ, right? That is no reflection of who I am as a person or my talent on the field. I didn't show up. Tomorrow I will show up and it will be a different day. And I think that that's just how you continue to move forward, continue to maintain that confidence and also continue to build that up to a point where no one and nothing was going to be able to break it down. Beautiful, beautiful sentiments and advice, AJ. I'm taking notes to write that down to remember that. I have one more um, for Phaedra, and then we're going to um, get to some of the questions from uh, those of you joining us. When you see 
we heard Batuli talk about it. Um, we, we heard uh, the Vice President-elect Kamala Harris say this. Um, AJ had mentioned it. The, the, the concept of, yeah, <laughs> the concept of you may be the first, but make sure that you are not the last. Um, and it's not just in your professions, but I think for all of us, when we see other females being the first in different areas, it, it feels like a win and a celebration for all of us. So when you see the recent accomplishments of Kim Ang or Sarah Fuller, Katie Sowers, Natalie Portman, Beth Mo, the, the list goes on and it's a beautiful thing that the list continues to grow. Phaedra, put in perspective how that affects you and how that impacts you having been one of these people that's, that's laying down the pavement here for all of us. Uh, when I hear these these first, right, and like you said, everyone on this panel is one of those people, folks you just named, Katie Sowers, Sarah Fuller, Kim and G, um, it's a call to action, really, for me, because it means that, oh, we have tons of, you know, we have tons of work to do. Um, it, brief celebration, you know, for actually breaking through that ceiling, but now there's the work, you know, that needs to be done to bring others to this place not only to bring them to this place by you know extending your hand down and pulling them up but also now um, catapulting them to your shoulders so that they can climb and have others do the same um you know when when i win we all win when you win we all win and that's the mentality that we have to own there's enough of the big old precious pie for all of us to have all that we want abundance is you know what it what it is right and so there's plenty, and I think we have to um, get out of, because as, a, as athletes, right, it's in our nature to be competitive. It's in our nature to want to be the one, the, the best. Um, I think the beauty of playing team sports is that I've learned that, you know, and especially rugby, is that I can't go anywhere and I can't have success unless the people around me are supporting me and vice versa. I don't care how talented, um, how gifted, how strong, how fast, um, how powerful I am, I am nothing um, without the other 14 people that accompany me on that pitch. And so um, the same goes in this, this game of life and whether it's sport, whether it's in, you know, corporate America, no matter where it is, we have to bond, bind together and help each other. Because again, when one of us wins, we all win. Um, and, and giving that good energy and passing on that, that, that goodness and um, that positivity is, is, is really how we continue to break barriers um, and, yeah, and ensure that we won't be the last. Incredible. Thank you, Phaedra. All right, we're going to get to the questions um, from some of you individuals. And, and AJ actually touched on this, and it was so great in talking about um, getting 1% better. But this is a question from Jordan Latta, um, and I'm going to have all of you answer this. But Jen, let's start with you. What did you tell yourself on the days you were feeling discouraged? Did you have daily affirmations? First, I want to shout out what Phaedra said about having someone's back. Her position is literally flanker, which means she has someone's flank, just like it would be in the army. And me having been a prop, literally, she was like at my side and I can't think of a better way to like, just shout out that was her positional responsibility, but it's also who she's been in sports for a really long time. Um, for me, in terms of daily affirmations, I tell my girls like at the Gridiron Girls camps, let your game speak right? Let your game speak louder than your gender. Let your game speak louder than your haters. Let your game speak louder than anyone who would break it down because when you're good, they'll find you. And anyone who doesn't, give them whiplash with your ponytail because they missed out on greatness. And that's not your fault. That's their fault. The other trick that I have is like, you know, so for those of you who don't know, my PhD is in psychology. My master's is in psychology, in sports psychology. Your mind can only hold one thought at a time. That means truly live in that moment. So music is a great trick for that, okay? So if you've ever, you know, gone into a room and you were in a bad mood, you were having a bad day, and then you heard that song that's one of your favorites and you just can't help it. Like you're trying to be mad, like sad or whatever, but you just start rocking to the beat. 
that's because it's basically like changing your mindset. So give yourself a playlist. Athletes often do this, you know, instinctively, you see us with our headsets on and it takes us to somewhere else. Do that in life, right? Create a playlist for your life, put on the song that you need to when you're not feeling it and allow that mu music to transform you into the superhero that Colette mentioned or that, you know, that wasn't AJ. I don't, I don't know who that person was who had a bad game today. She does not define me. I'm right here right now. And this is who I am through it, but allow music to help you do it. Extraordinary advice. Colette, what about you? My, I, I tell my, I, I have a daily affirmation. Some days I use it several times a day because <laughs> other days are worse than others. And I tell myself, get up girl, get up girl, you're worthy. Get up girl, you got this. Get up girl, there's no one like you. Get up girl, God got you. Get up girl, just do it. So I hype myself up to the point where, forget about writing that email to the president of whatever company, I'm now doing push-ups you know, and squats before I send an email out. Uh, so for me, daily affirmation is something that I live by. I also go back and I read letters from children. Letters from children, when I, when I, visited, when I visit schools, I get stacks of letters from kids. They say, thank you so much for coming to my school. I feel important now. They make me cry when I read them, but I'm so happy because I can't give up on my people. That's what I do. Absolutely love it. Love it, Colette. Um, AJ, is there anything you wanted to add? I know you filled us in a little bit about your moments. Anything you wanted to add to some of the things, um, if you have moments of, of feeling discouraged or any other daily affirmations? Yeah, I mean, I think you just have to know who you are. And to Jen's point, right, be so good that they can't ignore you. And it just comes down to being the fact that you know exactly what you can do. You know exactly what you have inside of you. So head down, stay focused on your lane and continue to push through it. Don't go to the field or to the court, whatever. I think we all, when we're playing or practicing, we're all like, okay, just let me end on a good one, right? Don't work until you get it right. Work until you can't get it wrong. And when you come to that, it just comes down to the fact that you just tell yourself every single day, this is what I know I'm capable of. This is what I know I can do. And nothing defines me other than what it is I want to define, right? There are no limits put upon us except for the ones that we place on ourselves. And so view yourself as limitless and you truly can achieve anything it is that you want to achieve. Extraordinary. It's so important how we talk to ourselves and how you talk to yourself. Phaedra, what about for you? What is it that, that your um, mental conversation is like with yourself on some of those tough days? You know, I've had a lot of tough days since I entered. I did have a lot when I was playing rugby, but there's certainly um, been exponentially more since I have stepped into this mixed martial arts arena. Uh, martial arts within itself is, is such a unique discipline. And um, you, you can count on, no matter how talented, no matter how athletic you are, the, um, the amount of detail that is required in order to be efficient um, and to expend minimal energy, which is essentially what you want to do, especially when you're 46 years old and you're trying this mess, um, is, is so critical. And so um, on those days that I have those down days, you know, I, I'm actually happy. I actually come into the academy looking for, looking to get discouraged because in those moments is when I absolutely must find, um, dig deep, and refocus and, and those are the most challenging times obviously what it all what it adds though is on those on those days i guess it adds perspective right um you can't really know the significance of the sun if you don't have the thunderstorms and the rain to to, to give you that appreciation and um and so for me you know i guess you know it, it's something that i i welcome I embrace. Um, it's a part of life. Um, and, and on those days that I show up and I'm not, um, you know, 100%, uh, you know, I, I, I'm okay with that, right? I'm okay with that being Phaedra because that's a part of who I am and that's a part of the journey that's going to get me to the place that I want to be, right? A world champion. And so um, it, it's, it's, um, 
you know, it's just continuing to put one foot forward. I think what's also critically important is surrounding yourself with people that are going to push you and that are going to push you out of those comfort, that comfort zone um, and push you through those moments when you are discouraged. Um, that is so important. And so um, it's, it's, you know, continuing to persevere on my own, but also making sure that the people that I'm with are pushing me um, in the most uncomfortable times to get through it. An inspiration. It really is. Those words, all, all of your words um, mean so much. And I hope everyone, we're so thrilled to have everyone here, um, really take it to heart, really take it to heart and, and speak to yourself in that way. Um, we have one more final question uh, for everyone. I'm going to start, um, Jen, with you on this one. Do you have any advice uh, for girls in high school who want to play collegiately or professionally? to um, those that aspire to keep playing, what, what would your advice be for those girls? Yeah, so first thing I'm gonna say is when I, you know, we, we're, we're now in a time, thankfully, where there has been huge excitement and, and visibility around like Sarah Fuller recently kicking. Um, it, it's not always been that way in the history of football. Um, when I played, um, when I was the first woman to play men's pro football in a, in a contact position, the excitement was not the same. Um, it was, and it was every day for a year, you know, literally getting, getting the hits, right? Like I was a running back and it's indoors. So there's no running out of bounds, right? The exciting thing about now is that you're coming to a time in this game of football where women have been putting in a lot of work so that you will have opportunities that have been open in other sports before, right? Like in football, to me, there has never been a better time because there are doors opening all the time and you can see them at the top level in the women who have made it to like the sidelines of the NFL. You can see it in the growth of grassroots, which is a lot through the flag programs. Um, it's a varsity sport in four states in high school. But what just happened this year is that the NAIA announced that they were gonna have the very first varsity girls flag football season, which means that for the first time, the sport of football, you could change the trajectory of your life and your family through education. So doors are opening every day. And just because you, you don't see them right now doesn't mean they're not in the works. So the important part is that you put in the work so that all these doors that phenomenal women, like all of these women on this panel are working daily to open for you so that your path is, is a little smoother, thankfully, than maybe where it was at some point, you'll be there and you'll be ready. And you will, you will not just be saying, I'm here, I'm a girl, let me play. No, your game will be undeniable that somebody will be like, this girl needs to play, right? And so be that person and wake up with you know the humbleness that Phaedra just said of coming into a new sport and the swag that AJ mentioned in how she takes the field and the get up girl that Colette said, because girl, let me tell you, you can do this. You have to be your champion, go out there and market yourself so that people know you. That was something I didn't know is you have to be a champion for yourself in these opportunities and go after it. Because, you know, what I always said is what I could live with is not getting it, right? But what I couldn't live with was wondering what would have happened if I would have just gone for it, right? Like I, I didn't want to be that person who wondered years later, like, oh, I should have played football. Um, so go after it and, and leave no doubt that you did everything you possibly could to get the life that you really want. 
Amazing. AJ, what about for you? Because you played a multitude of sports, ultimately deciding that you were going to pursue softball. But take us back when you were in high school, what advice do you wish you would have gotten with your aspirations to play collegiately and professionally? Yeah, I definitely think that something that is important to know as a high school athlete that's looking to play in college or looking to play professionally is that you do not have to be a finished product. Please don't go out there and try so hard every single day to be perfect. Don't go out and try so hard to get noticed that you are not playing the way that you know how to play or you're not playing loose or you're pressing and trying too hard. And, you know, I think that I learned this in college, but it would have been amazing to learn in high school is that failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success, right? You cannot first succeed if you have not at least failed, right? Failure, in my opinion, is only the opportunity to more intelligently begin again, right? In order for me to know what I have to do to get better, in order for me to know what I can perfect, what I can make my strength, you have to know how to fail. And so look at failure as an opportunity, look at it as a challenge, look at it as something that's going to help drive you closer to your goal instead of something that's pulling you back. Um, you know, use an acronym for fail, first attempt in learning, right? So anytime you arrive to a failure, look at it, all right, this is just one more step. Now I just have to learn how to get onto that step, right? But this is one more step that's pushing me closer to my goal. This isn't something that's bringing you back. So in high school, when you're facing those failures, when you're facing these opportunities, I want you to take, sit back and think about how you can get better from that. What is it that I could have done to turn that failure into a success one step closer or, you know, faster first step? What am I looking for? Um, use those opportunities to get better so that in college, you just hit the ground running and you don't have to use different years to learn that failure is going to help you get better because failure is inevitable. And it really is your reaction to it that defines who you are as an athlete and really your path to success that you will take. So just get comfortable with being uncomfortable and make failure your friend. Beautiful. You've got Jen taking notes, I think. I think she's she's writing down some of, some of these words of wisdom. Um, Phaedra, what, what advice do you have for some of these high school girls on here um, that are hoping to continue on with their professional and collegiate careers? Yeah, I, uh, everything that everyone said, AJ just said, and Jen has said, um, kind of 100% agree with. Um, keep keep moving forward. It's one step at a time, you know. And and you know, AJ, I totally agree. You know, failure is an inevitable part of success. It's transition, really, right? It's transition um, into the next thing. And that's another uh, thing that you know I've taken from a different perspective in martial arts. Um, when I fail at a single leg takedown, I just transition into a double leg takedown. And then if that doesn't work, maybe we'll come back to a single leg takedown. So the point of all of that is just to say, you just continue, continue. And even when you're the only one that's toiling, that's that's working, that's, that's doing this, um, you just keep going. Um, what you will learn is anyone that's had success is, is there's there's a, certainly a recipe out there, right? There's something, there's, a, there's an element that um, binds everyone. There's a common thread. And so the consistency, the diligence, the resilience, right? Um, the repetitiveness, right? Um, the attention to detail. Um, those are things that you just continue to get better and better and better at. Um, it's all about muscle memory. And so... Um, when you can forge ahead and just continue to go, even when you're the only one in the room, even when you're the only one on the pitch, even when you're the only one on the court, just know that there's a reason for that, right? Um, uh, if, 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 if it was some, if being on the top and being the best uh, was easy, then everyone would probably be there. But, you know, it's, it, that, that's just a part of the game. And so um, my encouragement to you is to just keep moving forward on those days that you're tired, that you, um, you know, don't feel your best, then just do the best that you can on that day. Doesn't always equate to what 100% was yesterday, but it's what 100% is in this moment. And that's change, it's, it's relative, um, but you just keep going. Thank you, Phaedra and Colette. You've, you've given these these young girls a, a lot to think about and a lot of advice. But what's your final piece here um, for those when they think about furthering their sports careers? Um, 
Be strong enough to stand alone. Be smart enough to know when you need help and brave enough to ask for it. Be brave enough to ask for it, but you first have to identify that sometimes you need some help and it's fine. It's fine to ask. So be smart enough to, to, to know when you need that help. Um, live by a code, a code of you, where nobody practices to be a backup, right? Practice to be a starter. So never give up on yourself. At the end of the day, you have to believe in you for every little girl and for every boy out there listening right now, know that you are worthy. Know that you have to prove yourself, not to the world, but to yourself. So get up and do the work. Every morning, people are sleeping. Let them sleep. You keep working. You be the best. It starts with you, right? We're never going to give up. We're always going to believe in ourselves. And if you believe you're fierce, then you are fierce. Stay the course. Stay the course. As a football player and a former coach, scheme it out. Scheme out your day. We have playbooks that are this thick sometimes. You make a playbook. Make a playbook for your life that you can do this. You know, study. Go on Google. Look up things. See the courses. Start taking the courses. Read more. Push yourself. All the time when you are working out and you think you can't do one more, guess what you can. It's that one more that shows the tenacity inside of you. Be intentional about all of your movements. And those, there for me, I don't even say failures, they're losses. And, and wins, in and, and, and sports, you have Ws, you have Ls. Ls are losses and, and Ws are wins. Take those Ls and make them lessons. They're lessons for you to improve on tomorrow. One of my, my favorite slogans that I created is, make tomorrow better today put the work in you can do this extraordinary extraordinary words extraordinary insights um in just a incredibly huge thank you to all of you for your time for being here for all of those i wish we could see everyone's faces but for all of you listening um we are so proud that you are even taking the time to be here um and make the effort in bettering yourself so um, to AJ, to Phaedra, to Jen, to Colette. Um, thank you. And of course, thank you to the person who brought us all together. We're going to turn this back to Batuli because she has some closing messages and remarks, but without her, we would not have had um, this beautiful moment together. So thanks to all of you. Wow. What an incredible event. Thank you so much to all of our guest speakers, our amazing moderator, Champions for Philanthropy, and all of our guests who joined us here today. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. And I hope you leave feeling inspired and motivated to go and be the first and to make sure you are not the last. Thank you again. And I hope you have an incredible day.